Hi everyone, welcome to the uh, 44th online Speedtronic seminar. Thank you for joining us, this is Xin Fan from the University of Denver. Uh, it, my, uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker today, uh, Professor Si Yuan Huang, is Associate Professor in the Department of Physics at uh, National Taiwan University. After receiving his PhD in electrophysics from uh, National Jiaotong University, he worked as a postdoc research fellow subsequently at uh, Academia Seneca, National Tsinghua University, uh, MIT, and uh, Johns Hopkins. He is an experimentalist in condensed matter physics, and his current research focuses on spintronics, spin calorotronics, and pure spin current phenomena. His honors and awards include a uh, uh, Taiyu Wu uh, Memorial Award, Academia Seneca Junior Research Investigator Award in 2018, a Golden Jade Fellowship in 2015, and Asian Asian Union of uh, Magnetic Society Young uh, Researcher Award in 2014. So without further ado, CM, please uh, go ahead with your talk. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Xinfan. And thank you very much uh, for your introduction and uh, Xinfan's invitation. It's my pleasure to uh, able to uh, share with you our recent result via this online seminar during this difficult time. Uh, here is, I will, today I'll talk about the generation, detection, and the manipulation of pure spin current, especially uh, in 3D magnet. Uh, here's my outline. I will divide my talk into the four parts, including the spin current enhancement in copper magnet, spin up tall in chromium, and the cro uh, current induced recent change in nickel oxide, and the magnetization dependence in tall effect in the platinum cobalt platinum trilayer. Although they are uh, different things, but they are two things in common. They are all 3D magnet, and they are all related to spin current phenomena. Regarding the recent emerging field of spin uh, current phenomena, we know the spin hole effect plays a central role. A charged current for a normal metal with strong spin coupling can convert to the transfer spin current by spin hole effect. And the duration of the spin current, charge current, and the spin index are also going on each other. However, uh, there's a pure, this pure spin current cannot be detected by electron means because it's a pure spin current. Conversely, if a pure spin current injects into the metal due to the spin up carpet, it converts to the charge current and to be electron detected. This is inverse spin hole effect, which has widely used to detect pure spin current and determine the conversion efficiency spin hole angle. If the spin uh, current source is the ferromagnetic insulator, since the electron current cannot move freely, so spin pumping and the spin seabed are the most important and well-established method that can generate a pure spin current. Magnetic spin current or spin wave spin current from ferromagnetic insulator layer can be detected by the inverse spin hole in the top normal metal. To excite this precision motion, spin pumping use resonant uh, microwave and spin seabed will use the thermal energy. And theory suggests spin pumping arises from a coherent motion generated by the FMR corresponding to the K equals zero magnet. And the spin seabed arises from the non-coherent thermal motion. Although spin seabed and the spin pumping has widely studied and consider share a similar mechanism, but we show that there's significant difference between them when one performs the major. And here's our study. We study both epitaxial and the polycrystal film, egg film, which are simultaneously fabricated using different substrates under the same fabrication conditions with GGG, silicon, and the glass. We know that egg and the GGG can form epitaxial structure because their small lattice mismatch. But the lattice mismatch is large between silicon and the egg, and the glass even has amorphous structure. So we expect after a annealing process, it film will form a polycrystal. After all, we did depart the platinum on top and do the spin seabed and the spin pumping measurement. We check the crystal structure and the thin film uh, by x ray and TEM. For the egg on the GGG, you can see the x ray spectrum as the main 444 peaks of egg and GGG. This indicates the main crystal phase is along the single crystal 101 direction. For comparison, the single crystal 8 also has show 222444 peaks. The TEA image that show the, the uh, egg crystal orientation follow the GGG with a very sharp interface. On the other hand, the polycrystal egg on the silicon and the glass has multiple peaks, 
including 400, 420, and 422, since the protein crystal is crystal. And you can also see the TEM image, especially like egg on the silicon, they have, and the phase Fourier transformation, we can say that the leg is with different orientation and the thin film is inhomogeneous. Then we perform the inverse spin hole measurement by the spin pumping. We observe a sharp peak for the epitaxial egg on the GGG. However, the signal in the polyquisal field, egg on the silicon and the gas is 20 times smaller and with the broader line width. Surprising results inverse spin hole voltage by the spin CB effect. The epitaxial and the polyquisal egg has similar large signal. Although there's a large difference between their spin pumping signal, different crystal structure, and FMR, but the spin spec can generate a robust spin current against the polycrystallinity. Besides, this signal may not simply come from the uh, coherent spin pumping. We show that this uh, FMR actually can induce various spin wave resonance, and they can all generate inverse spin hole voltage, but all results decay to zero at a low temperature. So we may not have coherent spin pumping. On the other hand, spin spin can generate robust spin current, serves a powerful tool to explore the spin current physics and the spin hole material. And the temperature gradient can easily be, be generated by the uh, research heater, current induced dual heating, and the light. If you are interested in the light citation, please refer to our recent publication. So we use spin spin effect to study several spin hole material. By spin spin effect, we establish a self-concealed method to study several spin hole material, including 5D heavy metal, such as platinum, gold, tantalum, and tungsten. Spin hole angle and spin difference can be quantitatively determined. We also show the rule of the number of e electron in spin hole coupling, which result in the tunable spin hole angle in the gold and the tantalum alloy. We demonstrate inverse spin hole in filament metal for the first time, Ferromagnet not only can generate spin polar current, can also detect pure spin current with the same mechanism of spin up coupling, such as permalloy, iron nickel alloy, and the cobalt. We also show inverse spin hole in chromium, which spin dams with anti ferromagnet. So this is the main topic of my talk 3D magnet. The material today I will cover is shown in this red box. First, it has been reported spin current excited by spin CB and spin pumping can be significantly enhanced through the insertion of 3D antifrail insulator, such as nickel oxide and the cobalt oxide. However, the thickness of antifrail insulator cannot be too thick, where the near temperature is even below the room temperature. Therefore, this enhancement attributed to the spin fluctuation with short range interaction. Similar result, but the most significant change was reported in the chromium 203. This result also inspired us to demonstrate high arm of spin current switch ratio in iron rhodium by first order phase transition between ferromagnet and anti ferromagnet. So far, it has shown that spin current in 3D magnet, including ferromagnet material, anti ferromagnet material, is much richer than half metal. And the difference between ferromagnet and anti-ferromagnet is the sign of change coupling. From the positive in the ferromagnet to a negative to anti-ferromagnet. Even without definite lattice pattern like amorphous cobalt and bromine, as long as there is a positive, you can have collinear anti-ferromagnet still exist. But if there is a negative, the collinear anti-ferromagnet does not exist. Instead, it forms spin glass state. About the spin fretting temperature, the spin gas also have a strong spin fluctuation. And below the spreading temperature of TF, it looks like random, but in fact, it's ordinary with short range interaction. Therefore, it will be very interesting to explore the spin current in the spin gas system. And the spin gas system we study is a copper magnet alloy, which is a 3D uh, magnet. It has switch, switch magnet phase. When the concentration of magnets increase, the magnet phase can change from the spin gas state to the anti ferro magnet state in the pure magnet. And by increasing the temperature, we can study copper magnet from the magnetic order state to spin fluctuation. And uh, again, we utilize spin current from the egg via spin zip effect to explore this interesting system. First, we by measuring zero field cool and the field cool magnetization, we can obtain the spin freezing temperature. The temperature is at which the zero field cool and the field cool 
bifurcates and exhibit irreversible behavior. Then carbon mini LED with various compositions are also measured. For the pure manganese, the zero field could show the 90 Kelvin is consistent with its near temperature. For the copper 86, magnetic 14, the TF around 50 Kelvin, they are all consistent with the previous result. And this TF clearly depends on its composition. Here we plot the TF on the copper magnetic composition, an uh, increase in manganese uh, contact result in increase in TF and reach a maximum around 80% then decrease. This behavior also has consistent with the previous report. So we can measure, now we measure the inverse spin hole and the spin hole voltage on this sample when we depart the copper magnet on the eco. Here's the typical example, copper uh, 86, magnet 15 on the eco, and the magnet on the eco. Compared to these two results, here is around voltage around 0.5 uh, microvolt, a large value, 9, 9 microvolt observed in the magnet. And the control sample is on the silicon, it's a bit, no major thermal module. Therefore, a non nurse effect, the contribution are not present in this field. Notably, the inverse spin hole for carbon 80, magnetic 14, had up the sign to that of manganese. I will talk about this sign later. Now, the spin current enhancement during the spin freighting transition can be captured by temperature dependent inverse hole measurement. The inverse hole voltage first increase, reach a maximum with the TP reviewing the inference of spin fluctuation, then decrease along with temperature. Similar enhancement was also obtained by other composition. The composition dependent TP clearly indicate the magnetic spin current is strongly influenced by spin fluctuation in carbon magnetic area. Furthermore, the TF and the TP present almost identical composition dependence, but TP was not equal to TF was approximately two times larger. If you consider the final size effect, it could be even larger. The difference between them has been reported by the more sophisticated technique, including neutron spin echo, mass bar effect, and muon spin realization. All of them report the onset of complex spin freighting process is considerably higher than magnetization TF. Therefore, spin current and the magnetometer are exploring different things. And to, uh, we use the critical theory to understand this continual phase transition. This method was first in introduced by this spin space wall in the anti field made by the Professor Sijin's group. The magnetic stability follows this relationship, where H is H divided KBT, beta gamma, the crystal exponent for spontaneous state magnetization. T is a critical temperature. You can uh, use TP or TF from the spin space and the magnetization measure. Here's our result. We show the spin space coefficient normalized by dividing its peak value. If we choose critical temperature uh, from the TP, we find all data collapse on the single curve. But if we choose critical temperature of TF from a magnetometer measurement, data will diver, uh, diverge at the temperature close to critical uh, result. Therefore, our analysis demonstrates the spin space coefficient scale with spin sensibility better than magnetic sensibility. The TP obtained from spin space measurement represents the critical point of spin sensibility during this continuous phase transition. Therefore, spin current not only can enhance by spin fluctuation, it also can be used to explore spin sensibility during the spin fluctuation and the spin freighting process. We, in addition, we estimate the spin hole angle and the spin dependence by the uh, second dependent measurement including resistivity and the inverse hole voltage. By using this equation and the formula fitting, we obtain spin hole angle for the carbon 80, magnetic 14 around the 7%, and the pure magnet around negative 4%. Spin diffuse length around 6 nm and 3.7 nm respectively. We further measure the inverse, hole, inverse spin hole voltage for over the entire composition. As shown here, the resistivity will increase linearly with the magnetic concentration. But we plot the voltage as fun, uh, divided by uh, resistivity as a function of magnetic concentration because it is proportional to spin hole angle. You can see this result. The voltage first increase and reach the part maxima, then decrease close to zero around 60%, and finally reach the negative maxima at 100% magnetic. Who determined this sign? It has shown that 
if you have a single uh, 3D transition metal, the total number of valence 3D electron and the force electron, when they are smaller than eight to nine, then spin point goes negative. Other, other, uh, on the other hand, if larger than eight to nine, it is positive. We find this uh, result criterion also works for the binary area in our system. According to this empirical relationship, we calculate and estimate the, uh, the concentration around the 60% we can observe the sign change, which is consistent to our result. Therefore, the sign of spin go for the binary area depends on the effective number of their balanced, uh, uh, balanced electron. So I show you spin current can enhance by spin fluctuation and spin current can be explored by spin sensibility and spin point goal is tuable. So spin current can capture this rich many property of spin glass. Now let me uh, go to my second topic, which is spin talk uh, in the chromium. Chromium, chromium also is 3D magnet. Uh, the theory predicts the spin hole angle is small because it's light metal, but spin, pump spin pumping shows spin hole angle could be large. Chromium is also a spin dense weight anti ferro magnet. The spin flick temperature is around 123 Kelvin, and the new temperature is around 311 Kelvin. By spin spin module, we show chromium indeed has a sizable spin hole effect. And from the, sig uh, from the uh, uh, signal, you can see. The chromium has the size of chromium has opposite to the size of the platinum, indicates spin hole angle is is negative. We also estimate the spin hole angle by a, a second dependent measurement, voltage as a receptivity. From this fitting, we obtain spin hole angle ED in the chromium comparable to the heavy metal such as uh, uh, tungsten and tantalum. To understand does interfere order play a role in this large inverse spin hole effect? We perform temperature determined measurement. Since the near temperature is around 311 Kelvin, we perform temperature measurement from the 30 Kelvin above 350 Kelvin. This non monotone behavior is actually similar to the platinum on E. So we attribute to the uh, intrinsic property of E due to competition between magnum population and the magnum spin diffusion length. More importantly, if we will compare the result above and the below near temperature, the data insertion unchanged indicate the large inverse spin hole in chromium is independent on its entire ordering. But it makes chromium could be important for spin hole uh, material, especially for application. So next, we study spin up to switching in a chromium. First, we have fab fabricated PMA material on top of chromium. This is a typical uh, interfacial PMA made by the MGO cobalt brown with heavy metal tendon. Interesting, when we replace the capping data tendon to the chromium, we still observe the PMA behavior. And when we replace the button layer of tendon to the chromium, PMA is still preserved. From the curve, you can see chromium actually can induce strong perpetual anisotropy, even better than heavy metal tendon, and whose strength can be uh, estimated by the field. Then we patent our same film as a, a whole bar device, and to measure the anomalous hole uh, signal. All the uh, devices can observe very nice anomalous hole signal, and the chromium-based heat structure has a uh, beta squeeze due to strong perpetual anisotropy. So instead of fuel switching, next we start the current switching. So now we, um, with the implant magnetic field, we perform a spin up to switching. We can observe a committed switching for all devices, and they have the same polarity which confirm the same sign of spin hole angle for the chromium and the tantalum. And the chromium-based PMA exhibit a hysterical loop with a higher squareness and a sharp switching in agreement with a numerous hole result. So we are basically demonstrate spin out switching from the 3D chromium layer without any heavy metal. To quantitatively measure the spin out efficiency, we further perform current induced hysterical loop shift measurement. The center of a natural loop shift to the positive by applying negative current and the shift to the negative by applying the positive current in the presence of implant fuel around 200 Earth state. This horizontal shift is induced by damping lactose spin up effective fuel along outer plane direction and which is scaled linearly with applying your current. And this fuel is always a proportional current for each different uh, implant fuel. But this slope, 
will saturate when the field larger than DMI field. So from this value, we can estimate the spin up to efficiency. We indeed observe chromium has a um, sensible comparable spin up, spin up to efficiency uh, with the heavy metal such as tintin. Most importantly, we uh, even achieve the highly desirable feel free spin up to by major sample on different location, which locate around the seven millimeter. Our gun is two inch. Under this regime, the sample is very uniform with the same thickness. When we conduct spin up to current switch measurement without magnetic field, for the sample in the center, we anticipate no switching will take place. But when we measure a sample slightly of the center, we observe switching behavior from the partial to even fully switching. Although the film is uniform, the microstructure could be different. So we investigate the microstructure of the causation by high resolution SEM. We indeed observe a tilt current structure. Consequently, this implant isotropy has been broken. This oblique current structure acts like a applied field to achieve zero field spectral switch. This field free spectral switch not only can be observed in tantalum and chromium based heat structure, but also can be observed in all chromium based heat structure. More interesting, this switch spectral switching polarity can be reversed when you measure a sample at location when the oblique angle changes from the positive to the negative. So we, we further estimate the critical angle to achieve the feel free switching. We find only need six degree. So we demonstrate feel free switching and uh, this is due to the uh, oblique current structure. The demonstration of polarity control of this feel free spectral switching in this uniform thin film could be very useful for a spin trying device. While we have utilize the anti filament property, this will uh, this my next topic currently induce recent change in nickel oxide. We know uh, recently spin up to anti field near vector switching has attracted worldwide attention. The first experiment demonstrating spin up to switching is, is carbon magnetic arsenic. Because local inversion symmetry broken, the current flow in this material will generate a local spin current which will interact with magnetic moment and switch its near vector. The device is patterned into a terminal device with four terminal as a writing current and four terminals as reading current. The horizontal writing current switch the near vector in the vertical direction. The vertical writing current switches the moment in horizontal direction. The switching of near vector can be read from this positive and the negative whole reasons. Similar report has been shown in magnet to go. The switching of this near vector due to current induced spin up to. But more interesting, it was also report in the uh, nickel oxide. Nickel oxide is anti antifilament insulate with no bulk and local inversion symmetry breaking. But uh, through attach the heavy metal platinum, the spin current can be generated and supposedly to switch its near vector. And through the help of spin hole magneto reasons, platinum can be used as a detector of near vector switching in nickel oxide. This is important result because it allows a more choice of anti-fail magnet to be investigated. So we also start from the nickel oxide. The platinum nickel oxide heat structure is a fabric by sputtering with a terminal device. Just like previous work, we use pass writing current. The current density is, is around the four to seven m per centimeter square, with a much low uh, uh, reading current around the ten to five m per center square, uh, center square. After applying current along the forty five degree and the one hundred thirty five degree, also called right one and right two, with a ten second delay, the transfer reasons are subsequently measured. We also observe a similar so two signal which has been reported as evidence of interfere near vector switch. We not only measure the transverse reasons, we also measure the longitudinal reasons and observe similar so tools behavior. However, these results are so made different from the spin up to switching I discussed above. In the spin up to switching or spin transfer to switching, if the applied current is below the critical current density, nothing happens. However, when applied current above the critical current density, we can observe rapid and irreversible change in the reasons. 
and this reason they keep uh, the same with further increase in current density. This solution result can also check by few measurements, and the uh, evidence of switching mag moment are unequivocal. But this research in nickel oxide is incremental change. The reasons can increase with increasing number of pairs. And since these transfer reasons and the longitudinal reasons are electrical signal, one expects this result to intrinsic to anti-ferro magnet and normal metal material and independent of insulating substrate we use. But quite contrary, when we change the substrate from the silicon to the gas, we found both transverse and longitudinal depend greatly on substrate. With even smaller uh, charge current, the change of reasons on the same pattern on the glass is much larger than the silicon. This indicates a strong influence of the substrate. We, to investigate the continuous of recent change, we measure the reasons as a function of current density instead of its number of pairs. We find below the 30 mm, the transfer reasons and longitudinal reasons are constant, independent of the writing current density as expected in the omic region. However, when applied current is about 30 mm, we can find reasons increase with increased current density. It is in an omic region. We further apply writing current along the right one, right two direction, like the 45 and the 135, we find a recent change. But this recent change can only be observed when current is beyond the 30 mm. We realize this recent difference happened in an omic region. This means current induced dual heating may play an important role in recent change. To clear damage our claim, we remove anti fuel insulator layer and the only major pretend on the substrate. Surprisingly, we can observe similar so two signal even without anti fuel layer. The magnitude is significantly different on various substrate. Similar results also occur in longitudinal recent measurements. We find the magnitude of signal is inverse proportional to thermal conductivity of the substrates. The glass has a poor thermal conductivity, so give rise to a large signal. To understand the temperature distribution, we use the console to simulate our experiment condition. With writing current density around uh, 10 to 7 m per centimeter square range, the current lines already hit about 100 degrees C. And the right one and the right two can generate a temperature asymmetric at the, uh, at the center of the T1 and the T2. Consequently, when you measure the transfer reasons, the voltage terminal also will switch the sign. And the both temperature difference and the transfer reasons will scale with writing current density. Uh, therefore, despite many report claims, we still think the evidence of spin up torque induced uh, switching is still missing. And to truly prove the switching of anti ferro magnet, one has to unequivocally detect anti ferro near vector before and after switching. Let me go to my uh, last part, magnetizing dependent spin hole effect. I see now it's uh, very clearly spin hole effect play a central role in the spin current phenomenon. The duration of electric current, spin current, and spin index are always perpendicular to each other. However, if a spin current injects into a 3D magnet, this straight relationship of a spin hole effect could be lifted due to the interaction of the spin current and the magnetization. To highlight the important rule of magnetization, we call it magnetization dependent spin hole effect, MDSHE in short. In this MDSHE, the spin index is replaced by the cross product of spin index and the magnetization. When the electron current injects into a ferro magnet with out of plane magnetization, the transfer spin index will process a long end as a constant the spin index can rotate to the x direction. On the other hand, when magnetization along the x direction, the spin can rotate to the next z direction. Conversely, just like inverse spin hole effect, the spin current, injured spin current with different spin index can convert into electric current along the same direction as magnetization dependent inverse spin hole effect. Therefore, the direction of spin index can be arbitrarily controlled by this MDSG. This unconventional spin current phenomena first proposed by theory 
including the spin position due to the interface spin up view in spin rotation effect, spin position due to the relative view from the impurity in spin swapping effect, also uh, intraback contribution consider the intrinsic effect in magnetic spin hole effect. Our uh, chairman, Professor Feng, also have a nice review article about the spin current in ferro magnet. Experimentally, it has also been reported in several multi layer, which often consist of two ferro main systems with also gonal magnetization and separated by the normal metal. This unconventional spin accumulation has been measured by Mock, also reported by Professor Feng, and the magnetization dependent surface spin up torque and the second order plane hole effect. It also report in magnetic routine heat structure by non-local measurement and spin power measurement. All this system is permanently based metallic layer with a complication of charge contribution in metal, including a mass hole, plane hole, AMA, and a numbness. Therefore, it's very difficult to clearly explore these novel spin accumulations, not to mention quantitative analysis the conversion efficiency. So here we propose using magnetic insulate as spin source to avoid the complicated signal from the metal. The spin current is injected from the egg by spin CB effect. The magnetization of egg, oh, sorry, the magnetization of the egg sets the uh, spin index direction, and we apply output output temp output, output temperature gradient to inject spin current. In this con configuration. We can observe spin current convert to charge current by the inverse spin hole effect in S direction. Filament material can also be used to detect spin current, just like normal metal. However, when magnetization is weak, switch to X direction. There's no inverse spin hole signal in this direction. But still, this spin current will interact with magnetization, resulting in spin to charge conversion by the magnetization dependent even spin hole. And this signal should be strongly dependent on magnetic orientation. For example, the sign should be reversed when we switch magnetization from the up to the down, in contrast to the inverse spin hole, which is independent of magnetization orientation in field magnet. Therefore, without any probability effect, we can unambiguously demonstrate magnetic dependent inverse spin hole. First, we have deposited the PMA layer on top of the egg, and we check the stability of PMA by a numbers hole effect. You can see there's a very good squareness of a numbers hole reasons as a function of the outdoor plane magnetic field. And this will show a very strong PMA in plate and cobalt plane trilayer. When we fix this magnetization in the up state, and this PMA is robust, even during field scan in the X duration. With this 20 Earth day, the magnetization in the egg can freely rotate due to small anisotropy and the small HC of E, which is around the 20 to 30 Earth day. At the down state, the magnetism is also stable. Now, when we rotate the field from the X direction to the implant direction, we can see both up and down state are both robust. This is because the, this uh, PMA, the NSS view is around 20,000 Earth day, uh, uh, 2,000 Earth day. Next, then we enjoy the spin current with auto plane temperature gradient, and we set magnetic field along X duration to detect this spin signal. Remember, in this geometry, there's no inverse spin hole signal. However, a clear spin dependent signal is observed, and then the conversivity its field is consumed with the lot of the ego. Now this signal can be directly attributed to magnetization dependent spin hole effect. Most importantly, when magnetization switch from up to down, we found this spin dependent signal is also reversed. This behavior clearly fulfills the characteristic of magnetization dependent spin hole. To demonstrate this signal is indeed comes from spin current, we replace spin source from the egg to the silicon and the major in the same geometry. The spin dependent signal disappear regards up and the down state. So our result clearly demonstrate the interaction between spin current and the magnetization without any complex contribution and the priority effects. The spin test can be strongly influenced by magnetization in this filament material. 
We can also detect the inverse before control fusion from this uh, perpendicular magnetic layer by rotating many field in the y direction. Now, this spin dependent signal is attributed to inverse spin hole. Notably, this field dependent spin signal remains the same when we switch magnetic direction from the up to the down. Because spin hole effect is strictly follow the orthogonal relationship, the inverse spin hole effect is independent on the magnetic direction. Again, in the control sample, without spin current source, the electric signal becomes negligible. Therefore, we can clearly distinguish the signal between the inverse spin hole and the magnetic dependent inverse spin hole. Here, by comparing the spin signal, magnetic spin hole, and the inverse spin hole, we show that at least 3.6% spin experience the effective 90 degree spin rotation. We also estimate spin to charge efficiency of this magnetic dependent spin hole effect, which is about 90.04%. Although it is not large but significant, this provides a way to arbitrarily and independently control the spin index in spin current, which will be great benefit for our spin training device. So let me sum up. We demonstrate spin uh, current is a very useful tool to study the complex spin fading process, including spin fluctuation, spin current enhancement, and spin sensibility. And we demonstrate spin up to switching in a 3D chrome based heat structure. We achieve polarized control and feel free spin switching by oblique current structure in uniform thin film. And we do not observe the evidence of switching anti field near vector due to serious thermal issue. And I show you magnetic dependent spin hole effect. The spin orientation of spin current induced by the magnetization dependent spin hole effect can be arbitrary and independent control by the magnetization direction in filament layer. So I believe spin current in 3D magnet, including filament and anti filament and the spin fluctuation spin gas, is far more richer than half metal. So I would like to acknowledge uh, Professor Jiaolin Chen in John Hopkins and my co-worker, uh, Dr. Sanfani at the Mesnika and the Professor Chifun Bai at National Taiwan U University. I also want to thank Dr. Daniel Kyu from the Academic Sinka and my student, Bo Xun Wu, uh, Yan Zhang Du, and uh, Zhao Qi Zhuang, uh, Jiang Zijie, and also uh, financial support. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for the for the nice talk. Uh, some of you probably didn't know that it's uh, 1 a.m. in the in Taiwan, so this is a, a very nice midnight seminar. Uh, so this talk is open for questions. If you have questions, if you're in, on Zoom, please use the raise hand button. And if you have trouble finding that, you can always send me a private uh, message, and I will call you uh, in, uh, accordingly. If you're on Twitch, uh, just uh, type your question on the chat box. Uh, the first question will be uh, asked by uh, BK Kaushik. Please uh, unmute and ask your question. Yeah, so uh, for Sir Huang, it was really wonderful talk. Thank you. So I have just one question. Uh, by the way, you have used chromium uh, for having some better performance, especially the spin wall angle and other things. So by the yes. way, if you are using chromium, uh, what about the situation of the resistance, the conductivity of chromium instead of some other materials such as tantalum or some other kind of materials for having more spin wall effect? Oh, okay. Uh, compared to a tantalum tungsten, I think chromium is compared to that is not easy to oxidize. So uh, the receivability is uh, if you uh, but, but you still still need protection there. You will protect where the receivability can be smaller than tungsten and the tungsten. And uh, you know tantalum tungsten, we have ultra thin field it become beta phase. The receivability can be a uh, hundred, twenty, two hundred, three hundred micro ohm centimeter. My chromium case is around 100 to 200 micro per centimeter in the very thin film. So this could be a lot of advantage for, to use chromium as spin up to device. So does it have any disadvantage in comparison to tantalum and tungsten? You mean compare what? Compared to tungsten and, uh, and tantalum, does chromium have 
any disadvantage? Disadvantage. If you compare the if the speed up to efficiency, it is comparable, but still a uh, smaller than Tantan and Tungsten. And the other hand is a uh, home can induce strong PMA. So in some case, if you don't have a uh, zero fuel solution, you need a larger imprint view to a certain solution. Your capacity could be capacity fuel could be larger. But if you can achieve your fuel solution, then the signal will be more robust than the tantalum and tungsten. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, is there any other question? Uh, case three RAM, do you want to ask a question yourself? Or do you want me to read the question? Okay, so we have one question. Uh, can you comment on the inverse spin hall effect independency on magnetization direction? Uh, I think that's referring to your last part. Yes. That because okay, in the in the spin hole effect, the the charge current, spin current, uh, still follow the the uh, pro, cross cross product rule. Therefore, it should be independent to magnetization. But if you consider the interaction of spin current and the magnetization, then there's an interaction, which also uh, Professor Shinfan know the spin current, spin depth will process or interact with magnetization, give you the uh, uh, the other effect. But if you can inverse spin hole, it should be independent of magnetization. Uh, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but if not, you can always uh, ask sent again uh, for follow up questions. Okay, uh, looks like you have answered the question. Uh, is there any other other questions for Professor Huang? Let me check the. Okay, I just want to ask a, a quick question about the uh, um, tilted column grain. Sure. I'm not sure if I asked you before, but uh, for the, uh, when, when, when you can realize the field free switching of the, uh, of the, of the uh, magnetization, if you have, if your grain is, uh, is tilted, uh, yes. have you checked if those 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 materials uh what is the easy axis because typically when you grow a thin film it's either perpendicular or in plane however if your if your grain is tilted is it possible that your easy axis is actually along the the the, the grain direction uh, i see we didn't check but from the anonymous whole uh, most likely still a PMA dominate. Uh, still perpendicular. Dominate. Yes, still perpendicular. So we, but we didn't check the microstructure does this, we have some tilting angle about the easy acid of, of the magnetization. But the PMA still dominate. I see. Thank you. Um, we have one question from Twitch, so I'm just going to read this uh, to you. Thank you very much for uh, uh, thank you for a very nice talk. Uh, for the last portion, is the thermal gradient across the platinum cobalt platinum trilayer uh, the same for the control sample and the EEG sample? Is this verified by COMSO? Yes. Uh, in when we apply temperature gradient, indeed, it across uh, it, we apply the uniform temperature gradient. Therefore, it cross the entire sample. And we haven't tried to console to, to simulate, but not only in the EEG sample, control sample silicon, we even apply the temperature gradient when we perform a numbskull measurement because we want to make sure under temperature gradient, the PMA is stable. It is possible when you apply temperature gradient, a new sample PMA will, will change. 
So everything is under the same experiment condition. Thank you, Eric. If uh, if uh, if you have follow up questions, you can keep typing on the on the on the chat window. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to read another question from Zoom. Uh, is it possible to grow the inclined column using sputtering? Inclined column. Just tilted column. Yeah. Uh, yes. Because you can use spot your sputtering. They are called shuttering effect, and also you can do the of excess uh, sputtering. But in our case, we find you don't need a very large angle. Only few degree can help you to achieve real field switching. I think this is an important point we, we find. Yeah, so uh, it should be easy to cross the, the tilting color angle by sputtering. And maybe this is the best way compared to thermal evolution, I think it's very hard. Thank you. Sputtering plasma can be different direction. Um, so, uh, Vika Kaushik has one more question. Please go ahead with that question. Yeah, Professor Huang, actually, I had uh, one more question, very simple question. By the way, you have uh, simulated things, all these structures on console. So, uh, if I if I try to get it done on micromagnetic simulation, such as new max. Uh, would it be giving me the same kind of results and what would be the advantages and disadvantages using micromagnetic simulation instead of console? Oh, I think they are the, they are very different thing. Uh, console just very simple simulation and uh, micro simulation can give you the uh, detail of magnetization orientation domain wall and uh, also you can consider LLG equation. The console just uh, give me a, a, a estimate like how much temperature gradient distribution and uh, the current distribution and even the voltage distribution. But cannot, cannot give the micro simulation, the magnetic micro simulation, the information of the micro simulation. I think they are uh, still not comparable. So can I can I do some kind of temperature gradient simulation using micromagnetic simulations also? Mm, this part I'm not sure. I don't know. Can we do that? Sorry, I don't know the answer for this part. Numax Numax cannot simulate a temperature gradient for you, but uh, if I remember it correctly, if you can input the temperature gradient then the uh, Mumex can simulate just the, from the different fluctuations. Mumex can, can, can perform the simulation on, on the magnetization part. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. All right, is there any other question? Okay, if there's no other question, I want to uh, thank the speaker again